Solid modeling is a consistent set of principles for mathematical and computer modeling of three-dimensional solids. Solid modeling is distinguished from related areas of geometric modeling and computer graphics by its emphasis on physical fidelity. Together, the principles of geometric and solid modeling form the foundation of computer-aided design and in general support the creation, exchange, visualization, animation, interrogation, and annotation of digital models of physical objects. Overview The use of solid modeling techniques allows for the automation of several difficult engineering calculations that are carried out as a part of the design process. Simulation, planning, and verification of processes such as machining and assembly were one of the main catalysts for the development of solid modeling. More recently, the range of supported manufacturing applications has been greatly expanded to include sheet metal manufacturing, injection molding, welding, pipe routing etc. Beyond traditional manufacturing, solid modeling techniques serve as the foundation for rapid prototyping, digital data archival and reverse engineering by reconstructing solids from sampled points on physical objects, mechanical analysis using finite elements, motion planning and NC path verification, kinematic and dynamic analysis of mechanisms, and so on. A central problem in all these applications is the ability to effectively represent and manipulate three-dimensional geometry in a fashion that is consistent with the physical behavior of real artifacts. Solid modeling research and development has effectively addressed many of these issues and continues to be a central focus of computer-aided engineering. Mathematical Foundations the notion of solid modeling as practiced today relies on the specific need for informational completeness in mechanical geometric modeling systems, in the sense that any computer model should support all geometric queries that may be asked of its corresponding physical object. The requirement implicitly recognizes the possibility of several computer representations of the same physical object as long as any two such representations are consistent. It is impossible to computationally verify informational completeness of a representation unless the notion of a physical object is defined in terms of computable mathematical properties and independent of any particular representation. Such reasoning led to the development of the modeling paradigm that has shaped the field of solid modeling as we know it today. All manufactured components have finite size and well-behaved boundaries. So initially the focus was on mathematically modeling rigid parts made of homogeneous isotropic material that could be added or removed. These postulated properties can be translated into properties of subsets of three-dimensional Euclidean space. The two common approaches to define solidity rely on point-set topology and algebraic topology respectively. Both models specify how solids can be built from simple pieces or cells. According to the continuum point set model of solidity, all the points of any X3 can be classified according to their neighborhoods with respect to X's interior, exterior, or boundary points. Assuming 3 is endowed with the typical Euclidean metric, a neighborhood of a point Px takes the form of an open ball, for X to be considered solid. Every neighborhood of any Px must be consistently three-dimensional. Points with lower dimensional neighborhoods indicate a lack of solidity. Dimensional homogeneity of neighborhoods is guaranteed for the class of closed regular sets, defined as sets equal to the closure of their interior. Any x3 can be turned into a closed regular set or regularized by taking the closure of its interior, and thus the modeling space of solids is mathematically defined to be the space of closed regular subsets of 3. In addition, solids are required to be closed under the Boolean operations of set union, intersection, and difference. Applying the standard Boolean operations to closed regular sets may not produce a closed regular set. But this problem can be solved by regularizing the result of applying the standard Boolean operations. The regularized set operations are denoted and minus. 
The combinatorial characterization of a set X3 as a solid involves representing X as an orientable cell complex so that the cells provide finite spatial addresses for points in an otherwise enumerable continuum. The class of semi-analytic bounded subsets of Euclidean space is closed under Boolean operations and exhibits the additional property that every semi-analytic set can be stratified into a collection of disjoint cells of dimensions 0, 1, 2, 3. A triangulation of a semi-analytic set into a collection of points, line segments, triangular faces, and tetrahedral elements is an example of a stratification that is commonly used. The combinatorial model of solidity is then summarized by saying that in addition to being semi-analytic bounded subsets, solids are three-dimensional topological polyhedra, specifically three-dimensional orientable manifolds with boundary. In particular this implies the Euler characteristic of the combinatorial boundary of the polyhedron is 2. The combinatorial manifold middle of solidity also guarantees the boundary of a solid separates space into exactly two components as a consequence of the Jordan-Brower theorem, thus eliminating sets with non-manifold neighborhoods that are deemed impossible to manufacture. The point set and combinatorial models of solids are entirely consistent with each other, can be used interchangeably, relying on continuum or combinatorial properties as needed, and can be extended to n dimensions. The key property that facilitates this consistency is that the class of closed regular subsets of n coincides precisely with homogeneously n-dimensional topological polyhedra. Therefore every n-dimensional solid may be unambiguously represented by its boundary and the boundary has the combinatorial structure of an n-1-dimensional polyhedron having homogeneously n-1-dimensional neighborhoods. Solid representation schemes Based on assumed mathematical properties, any scheme of representing solids is a method for capturing information about the class of semi-analytic subsets of Euclidean space. This means all representations are different ways of organizing the same geometric and topological data in the form of a data structure. All representation schemes are organized in terms of a finite number of operations on a set of primitives. Therefore the modeling space of any particular representation is finite, and any single representation scheme may not completely suffice to represent all types of solids. For example, solids defined via combinations of regularized Boolean operations cannot necessarily be represented as the sweep of a primitive moving according to a space trajectory, except in very simple cases. This forces modern geometric modeling systems to maintain several representation schemes of solids and also facilitate efficient conversion between representation schemes. Below is a list of common techniques used to create or represent solid models. Modern modeling software may use a combination of these schemes to represent a solid. Parameterized primitive instancing this scheme is based on motion of families of objects. Each member of a family distinguishable from the other by a few parameters. Each object family is called a generic primitive, and individual objects within a family are called primitive instances. For example a family of bolts is a generic primitive, and a single bolt specified by a particular set of parameters is a primitive instance. The distinguishing characteristic of pure parameterized instancing schemes is the lack of means for combining instances to create new structures, which represent new and more complex objects. The other main drawback of this scheme is the difficulty of writing algorithms for computing properties of represented solids. A considerable amount of family-specific information must be built into the algorithms and therefore each generic primitive must be treated as a special case, allowing no uniform overall treatment. Spatial occupancy enumeration This scheme is essentially a list of spatial cells occupied by the solid. The cells, also called voxels, are cubes of a fixed size and are arranged in a fixed spatial grid. 
Each cell may be represented by the coordinates of a single point, such as the cell's centroid. Usually a specific scanning order is imposed and the corresponding ordered set of coordinates is called a spatial array. Spatial arrays are unambiguous and unique solid representations but are too verbose for uses master or definitional representations. They can, however, represent coarse approximations of parts and can be used to improve the performance of geometric algorithms, especially when used in conjunction with other representations such as constructive solid geometry. Cell decomposition This scheme follows from the combinatoric descriptions of solids detailed above. A solid can be represented by its decomposition into several cells. Spatial occupancy enumeration schemes are a particular case of cell decompositions where all the cells are cubical and lie in a regular grid. Cell decompositions provide convenient ways for computing certain topological properties of solids such as its connectedness and genus. Cell decompositions in the form of triangulations are the representations used in 3D finite elements for the numerical solution of partial differential equations. Other cell decompositions such as a Whitney regular stratification or Morse decompositions may be used for applications in robot motion planning. Boundary representation in this scheme a solid is represented by the cellular decomposition of its boundary. Since the boundaries of solids have the distinguishing property that they separate space into regions defined by the interior of the solid and the complementary exterior according to the jordan brower theorem discussed above, every point in space can unambiguously be tested against the solid by testing the point against the boundary of the solid. Recall that ability to test every point in the solid provides a guarantee of solidity. Using ray casting it is possible to count the number of intersections of a cast ray against the boundary of the solid. Even number of intersections correspond to exterior points, and odd number of intersections correspond to interior points. The assumption of boundaries is manifold cell complexes forces any boundary representation to obey disjointedness of distinct primitives, i.e., there are no self-intersections that cause non-manifold points. In particular, the manifoldness condition implies all pairs of vertices are disjoint, pairs of edges are either disjoint or intersect at one vertex, and pairs of faces are disjoint or intersect at a common edge. Several data structures that are combinatorial maps have been developed to store boundary representations of solids. In addition to planar faces, modern systems provide the ability to store quadrics and NURBS surfaces as a part of the boundary representation. Boundary representations have evolved into a ubiquitous representation scheme of solids in most commercial geometric modelers because of their flexibility in representing solids exhibiting a high level of geometric complexity. Surface mesh modeling similar to boundary representation, the surface of the object is represented. However, rather than complex data structures and NURBS, a simple surface mesh of vertices and edges is used. Surface meshes can be structured or unstructured meshes with randomly grouped triangles and higher level polygons. Constructive solid geometry Constructive solid geometry connotes a family of schemes for representing rigid solids as Boolean constructions or combinations of primitives via the regularized set operations discussed above. CSG and boundary representations are currently the most important representation schemes for solids. CSG representations take the form of ordered binary trees where non-terminal nodes represent either rigid transformations or regularized set operations. Terminal nodes are primitive leaves that represent closed regular sets. The semantics of CSG representations is clear. Each subtree represents a set resulting from applying the indicated transformations, regularized set operations on the set represented by the primitive leaves of the subtree. 
CSG representations are particularly useful for capturing design intent in the form of features corresponding to material addition or removal. The attractive properties of CSG include conciseness, guaranteed validity of solids, computationally convenient Boolean algebraic properties and natural control of a solid shape in terms of high-level parameters defining the solid's primitives and the positions and orientations. The relatively simple data structure and elegant recursive algorithms have further contributed to the popularity of CSG. Sweeping the basic notion embodied in sweeping schemes is simple. A set moving through space may trace or sweep out volume that may be represented by the moving set and its trajectory. Such a representation is important in the context of applications such as detecting the material removed from a cutter as it moves along a specified trajectory. Computing dynamic interference of two solids undergoing relative motion, motion planning, and even in computer graphics applications such as tracing the motions of a brush moved on a canvas. Most commercial CAD systems provide functionality for constructing swept solids mostly in the form of a two-dimensional cross-section moving on the space trajectory transversal to the section. Implicit representation A very general method of defining a set of points X is to specify a predicate that can be evaluated at any point in space. In other words, X is defined implicitly to consist of all the points that satisfy the condition specified by the predicate. The simplest form of a predicate is the condition on the sign of a real-valued function resulting in the familiar representation of sets by equalities and inequalities. For example if the conditions, and represent, respectively, a plane and two open linear half-spaces. More complex functional primitives may be defined by Boolean combinations of simpler predicates. Furthermore, the theory of R functions allow conversions of such representations into a single function inequality for any closed semi-analytic set. Such a representation can be converted to a boundary representation using polygonization algorithms, for example, the marching cubes algorithm. Parametric and feature-based modeling features are defined to be parametric shapes associated with attributes such as intrinsic geometric parameters, position and orientation, geometric tolerances, material properties, and references to other features. Features also provide access to related production processes and resource models. Thus, features have a semantically higher level than primitive closed regular sets. Features are generally expected to form a basis for linking CAD with downstream manufacturing applications, and also for organizing databases for design data reuse. Parametric feature-based modeling is frequently combined with constructive binary solid geometry to fully describe systems of complex objects in engineering. History of solid modelers the historical development of solid modelers has to be seen in context of the whole history of CAD, the key milestones being the development of the research system build followed by its commercial spin-off Romulus which went on to influence the development of Parasolid, ASIS and solid modeling solutions. One of the first CAD developers in the Commonwealth of Independent States, ASCON, began internal development of its own solid modeler in the 1990s. In November 2012, the mathematical division of ASCON became a separate company and was named C3D Labs. It was assigned the task of developing the C3D geometric modeling kernel as a standalone product, the only commercial 3D modeling kernel from Russia. Other contributions came from Mantyla, with his GWB and from the GPM project which contributed, among other things, hybrid modeling techniques at the beginning of the 1980s. This is also when the programming language of solid modeling plasm was conceived at the University of Rome.